Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, John from MSP. So Ukraine War News Update, second part there are for the 21st of July 2024. This is the Ukraine uh, War Military Aid and Military Equipment video. So we're going to start with uh, the Supreme Commander of the the uh, American Forces, Supreme Allied Commander Europe uh, and Commander of US European Command, sorry, Chris Cavoli. Answering Shashank Joshi, the Economist defense correspondent, uh, question at Aspen, a conference there. I think, quote, I think it is underappreciated in the United States just how much our European uh, allies have awakened in to the fact that the house is on fire. This is not a show and this is not just rhetoric. So this is, I think, super important and people that are running for government from the Republican side in the US don't, I think, realize. So the um, people in the, in the potential Trump administration, how much the that Europe has woken up is taking note of what's going on in in Ukraine, how Russia are threatening European security, uh, European nations are spending more money. Things are really, really freaking serious. And Chris Cavoli here is talking about that idea. So, uh, Cavoli spoke at the Aspen Security Forum today and said that NATO alliance is in the midst of a major change in focus and readiness. Quote, there's a lot of work to be done and there is a big challenge. There are big challenges looming, some of them right in our face right now, the general said. Looming threat, of course, is Russia, but Cavoli cannot ignore challenges on the horizon, and that includes China. The general gave an explanation to the situation in Europe since he became NATO's competent commander just after the Madrid summit in 2022. At the summit, NATO leaders immediately implemented a strategy to deter Russia and to defend the alliance's history. Uh, sorry, territory. Uh, quote, this was an enormous sea change, Cavoli said. There, that was the business we were in during the Cold War. But after the Cold War, it was no longer necessary and we turned our attention to out-of-area operations. Those operations in the Balkans, Kosovo and Afghanistan allowed NATO nations to field smaller forces uh, who would deploy for specific times. Quote, the deployments happened on a very predictable basis, which allowed for a cyclical force generating process that allowed us to take many, many economies every place else, except for the unit that was deployed. He said, all the nations and NATO happily took the peace dividend and built a force that was optimised for that sort of operation. Russia launched its second invasion of its Ukrainian neighbour. And that force generating process was instantly outdated. NATO had to focus once again on collective territorial defense. Quote, we needed we need standing forces and at standing levels of readiness geographically focused on specific areas. So we wrote operational plans to do this, uh, so on and so forth. So there have been these big sea changes to how NATO is organizing itself Um Supporting Ukraine is vital for US and European security, Cavoli said, but people need to consider what's next. Quote, we can't be under any illusions at the end of the conflict in Ukraine. However, it concludes we are, go however, it concludes we are going to have a very big Russia problem, the general said. We are going to have a situation where Russia is reconstituting its force, is located on the borders of NATO and is led by largely the same people it is right now, is convinced that we're the adversary and is very, very angry. Uh, NATO must continue to support Ukraine now and must prepare for the inevitable end of the war in that country, says defense.gov. Um, Americans need to understand that Europeans see Russia's invasion of Ukraine as an existential threat. Quote, I think it's under uh, underappreciated in the United States just how much our European allies have awakened to the fact that the house is on fire, Cavoli said. This is not a show. And it's not just rhetoric. This is a true concern about the stability of their continent and the survival of their states. That's really big. And a, and a huge claim there from Cavoli that needs to be understood and taken on board by people who are running for government in US. Now, the European Fund for Ukraine will receive its first payment from the Belgian depository Euroclear by the end of July, the company's report. So remember that all these frozen assets around the world are mainly actually concentrated in Europe, in the EU, and most of them are frozen by Euroclear, right? This, that, that are, you know, responsible for giving Ukraine that money from the frozen, I guess, um, asset profits. Uh, it's about 
5 billion euros at the uh, at the expense of profits from the frozen assets of the Russian Federation that will hit the Ukrainian coffers from Euroclear by the end of this month which is not long now European Union has allocated 100 million euros in a grant funding to Ukraine go for the restoration and protection efforts of the Ukrainian energy system and infrastructure the grant agreement was signed in Kiev by Ukraine go's chairman Vladimir Kudrytsky and KFW Bank's Ukraine representative Lorenz Hesner, Hesner with the EU and Ukrainian officials present. So uh, more money coming from the EU to help support the Ukrainian energy uh, uh, infrastructure. Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umarov and British counterpart John Healy signed a bilateral agreement on military aid. The agreement involves a loan worth £2 billion, so that's more in dollars, uh, to finance Ukraine's defense needs. Uh, really good. So uh, according to the framework agreement, the loan will be used for implementing large scale initiatives aimed at enhancing Ukraine's defense capabilities. It will reduce the burden on the state budget and allow in the short term to obtain the necessary weapons for the defense of our state, first of all, in the field of air defense. So I presume uh, well, is one of the key elements of our strategy to strengthen the country's defense capabilities. We are grateful to the British partners for their support and are sure that this partnership will help us to in ensuring security and peace in Ukraine. So that loan, uh, I, I think, will allow them to buy. Well, who knows? But it could be stuff like uh, Patriot Systems from Israel. It might be an idea. Or uh, Patriot Interceptor Missiles or any any other thing. I don't know that there are any strings attached to that loan in terms of buying UK-provided equipment. Who knows? Anthony Blinken has reaffirmed the US support for Ukraine amidst election fears. So Ukraine is on, on its way to being able to, quote, stand on its own two feet militarily as Western countries continue exp to expand support for Kiev, a US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said on the 19th. I, uh, I think that Ukraine has been very sensible and partner nations have been very sensible in looking strategically at support for Ukraine and understanding that Ukraine needs to indeed stand on its own two feet. It needs an indigenous manufacturing sector in the defence domain to be able to create its own equipment. So if, if there's a change of political um, if the wins in the US, for example, or any other nation who's supporting Ukraine, then they can mitigate against problems of getting, for example, aid packages from the US if they've got if, as long as they can get money somehow then they can perhaps build their own equipment um, and what well, is never going to be enough compared to a, a, a lack of US support so US have that much equipment that they can give to Ukraine really like that that any kind of mitigation is going to be somewhat of a drop in the ocean but Nonetheless, Ukraine have been working so closely with defence industrial military complex partners from other countries, Rheinmetall, uh, BA Systems, so on and so forth, KNDS, uh, MBDA, uh, NDBA, MBDA, uh, so on and so forth, that they are in a much better position than they were. And, uh, and especially if you can get US defence uh, manufacturers to set up shop in Ukraine then you are presenting to an incoming government a an economic argument for supporting Ukraine right let us continue um Warsaw so Poland here made a positive decision that will help Kiev get F-16s faster Zelensky says now no one knows what this is about you know, there's a very cryptic sort of declaration here, but Poland's made a positive decision that will help speed up the delivery of F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. No elaboration, though, on that. Don't know what it means, but Poland's going to be involved in Ukraine getting F-16s quicker. But also, Polish MiG-29s may appear in Ukraine in about six months. This will depend on the time of their replacements with new US F-35s. So there's a backfill situation going on. These were MiG-29s that were possibly going to go to Ukraine much, much earlier in the war. And then I think it stopped for some reason. They got MiG-29s from Slovakia. That's all now causing Robert Fitzgerald and his administration to jump up and down and try and take the previous defence minister or defence secretary to court. 
etc., etc. And nonetheless, they the, these are older air aircraft, right? And they aren't ideal for what Ukraine need, but they they can do a job, and they are doing a job right now. And there will be an attrition on MiG 29s in the strikes that we're seeing on air bases and in maintenance issues, and with the occasional shoot down as well. Uh, so that will be super useful for the Ukrainians. Uh, French Aid to Ukraine says it should be noted that KNDS Ammo France plans to produce 100,000 complete shots of caliber, 52 caliber um, um, artillery ammunition in 2024. 80% are actually intended for export, 20% for the French armies. Of the 100,000 uh, 155mm artillery shells, 80,000 will be delivered to Ukraine, therefore. Uh, so this doesn't sound like a huge amount. It's not. France don't produce a massive amount of artillery ammunition but what they do or the claim from the French is what they do produce is very good quality ammunition so it's qu qu quality over quantity however Ukraine need quantity right now but nonetheless a ramping up of production from France will help Ukraine for sure. US Japan Patriot missile production has been delayed by component shortages according to Reuters. This is a bit of a worry because uh, Ukraine need as much Patriot equipment as they can get. US plans to produce more Patriot air defense missiles. So these are the interceptors critical for Ukraine's defense against Russia at Japanese factories. But it's been delayed by shortages of a crucial component made by Boeing. Four unnamed sources told Reuters. The US is looking for uh, to increase production of the missile, missiles from 500 annually to 750 globally as fast as possible. Uh, no expansion in Japan will be possible at all without additional missile seekers. The part that guides them in the final stages of the flight, sources said. Under a contract from the defense contractor Lockheed Martin, the Japanese company Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, MHI, currently produces around 30 Pac-3 missiles annually. MHI HI could up that figure to around 60, Japanese government officials and industry sources said, but it could take several years before MHI is able to raise output as a result of the shortage. Uh, the production snag in Japan uh, shows the challenges Washington faces in plugging industrial help from its global allies into its complex supply chains, Reuters wrote. Ukraine has struggled to obtain the adequate number of Patriot missiles systems it needs to protect itself from Russia as the number of systems systems in existence is limited and some partners are hesitant to give up theirs to Ukraine. And of course, the more systems they get, the more missiles they'll need. And the more missiles they need, the more missiles will need to be produced. And that presents a problem, as you can see here, with Boeing being able to get particular components to, in this case, uh, the Japanese producer under license of the um, interceptors. So, yeah, uh, a challenge to overcome. MOD, uh, the Ukrainian MOD has allowed a new modification of the Ukrainian armoured Kozak, and that's what it looks like, a medical version uh, to be used in the AFU, the U Ukrainian army, the Kozak 5 Med. The armoured car is designed for evacuating wounded, four lying down or six sitting soldiers, in addition to the driver and a group of medics, protection against fragments and 7.62mm bullets. Um, so there you have it. Telegraph is reporting that Ukraine is to create an, a new army of combat robots. Ukraine is raising funds to create a new fleet of ground robot platforms to help the military on the front line. Their task will include demining areas and evacuating the wounded, uh, says next here, and shows an aerial uh, drone instead. Well, if you want to see some ground drones, here we have PS01 saying some ground robots are being tested by Ukraine in order to gain an advantage on the battlefield. So these are the potentials for this new ground army of effectively robots we are we are entering terminator times aren't we so we've got demining and um, offensive robots as well that are um, involved in you know firing different munitions uh, so on and so forth uh, we'll see when these are be, be interesting to see when you see these or if you see them in the course of this war in some meaningful numbers such as we're seeing with UAVs of course 90,000 drones being produced a month for first person view drones or something like that and then all of those getting procured from abroad Ukrainians are, are throwing hundreds of thousands of these drones at the Russians every month or two Whereas with UGVs, we see the odd one here and there. Well, what would the battle space look like if you had Ukraine manufacturing 10,000 of these a month, 5,000 of these a month, and using them accordingly? 
Now, volunteer recruitment is up three and a half times over the past two months, according to Ukraine's military. Recruitment for voluntary service in the Ukrainian army has increased over the past two months compared to the period from late 2022 to spring 2024. Uh, 3.5 times better, according to Roman Horback, head of the General Staff's personnel department. So that is good. I hope it's it's true and that the Ukrainians are able to um, to increase their mobilization and their boots on the ground. That is one of the biggest challenges for Ukraine. And it's a huge challenge for Russia as well, but Russia have the... Uh, the greater ability to recruit from abroad. abroad, Russia continues to recruit Cubans, for example, to fight against Ukraine, motivating them by financial rewards and citizenship offers, offers despite Havana's efforts to curb enlistment, according to Bloomberg. And this is what they've been doing with other places like India and uh, Sri Lanka and Cape Verde, like a number of places, Africa, a lot of Africans are starting to be seen on the front lines or have been for some time, actually question is how many uh, to, to what tune are they able to mobilize from abroad this kind of crypto mobilization klepto mo mobilization sometimes and uh, that is of course something that ukraine is less able to do they they ukraine need to kind of entice volunteers in a more open way that that fits in line with how people view ukraine uh, because pr is super important russia's not too bothered about that they are like bribe people openly or screw them over with enticing them to Russia and then saying they've done something with their visas and then sending them into the armed forces so on and so forth. These kind of horror stories we hear quite often, but it means that they are able to bolster their forces quite significantly with, um, with these sorts of troops. Um, and that gives them the advantage over Ukraine. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. That's enough from me. Really appreciate your support. Take care. Speak soon. Toodle pips.